Guys, welcome to the Taylor Tackle Show. I'm your host, Ed Hitchcock, and on today's show, we're going to walk you guys through how to catch some big perch, and we're going to do that by walking you through the equipment we use, which is our 28-inch uh, medium-light multi-species ice fishing combo and our ice fishing kit. In that kit, we're going to focus primarily on the perch size, but even working up a little bit even to, even to walleye size, which is something I recommend doing when you're really trying to weed through those smaller ones and target some of those bigger jumbos. Then we're going to cover the locations, going really in depth on the structure and how to map things out, and then following through with the tactics and the techniques to seal the deal and getting these fish through the ice. And out of all the places we could have picked, uh, we went to Lake Cascade, Idaho, which I know is on a lot of people's bucket list. We think that this lake is just an incredible fishery, really big perch, anywhere between 12, 15 inches you know, the tens are on the small side. So just an awesome spot for this type of show. And an even better setup was that we got to fish with Bobby and Robin Schindler, who are just some awesome community members down in the Cascade region. They run the Western Ice Fishing Association, which does a really great job promoting ice fishing in the area. They run youth programs. They communicate uh, fisheries management info. Uh, they promote access to the fisheries. Um, as well as running seminars and just having a great time out there. So we saddled up with them and caught some massive perch. Had an absolute blast with those two and they are fantastic educators as well. So I'm super pumped to show you guys how to catch these big perch and how to learn from some of these great ice anglers that we have all throughout the ice belt. fish has some weight to it. Just want to make sure I keep my tip up. Not pointing down the hole there. And here he comes. Nice. Rattling crank. Taylor tackle. This is awesome. Good times. All right, Bob, you want to walk us through the setup that we're using today? Uh, this perch setup that we're using on Cascade? So this is going to be my dead stick setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this uh, lure down and I'm going to stop it at about a foot and a half off of the bottom. And then uh, we'll, we'll hold that there. So let's get this one down and then uh, this will be my dead stick rod and then I'll use this other rod as my active jigging rod. And so how much separation are you using on um, you know, the water column with your jigging rod versus your dead stick rod? Are those going to be the same foot and a half or are they going to be different? They're going to be different. So I'm going to stop this lure. I'm dropping it down right now. It'll be a foot and a half off the bottom. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actively use my jigging rod to jig above my dead stick uh, lure. And it'll be at the two to three, sometimes even four foot uh, jigging level. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm having a very passive presentation with a dead stick um, rod right here. And uh, whenever you use a dead stick, you want to use a rod holder because you don't want any movement on that rod or very little movement. Uh, perch can be very skittish. And uh, so the advantage of having um, a dead stick is that it's just a very, very subtle, slow presentation. Um, now we're going to drop this one down. This will be our active uh, lure. And what we're trying to entice here is uh, we're going to capture or bring in those fish that are actively feeding to chase a, a minnow type pattern. And uh, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we'll bring, this will actually attract most of the fish to come in. And as they chase this lure, if they decide they don't want it, sometimes they'll swim down and they'll see that, that dead stick lure down there and they'll take that instead. Or 
they'll come in and they'll just grab the dead stick rod. So I've got to keep an eye on that rod tip, but I'm also watching on my fish finder where I'm actively jigging. And like I said, I'm gonna jig about two to three foot uh, range uh, above that lure that uh, I've got sitting down there that's just sitting still. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what we're doing with this dead stick. We're trying to get it down to about a foot off the bottom. Now, I know a lot of you guys aren't gonna have electronics to show you that. And so really all you're gonna do is you're just gonna drop it down. You're gonna get it down to the bottom where this line's gonna go slack. And then you're gonna give it two or three, maybe four cranks, and that should get you about a foot up. Now we're gonna be able to see that, and you're seeing this go down. This is a flasher if you've never used one before. This red area is the bottom. That thing descending is my bait. Um, and that's the top right there. And so what we're gonna use is this to see where we're at to get a really accurate area. And you see that, there it goes, about a foot, maybe a foot and a half off. It's gonna move around as I switch it. But we're gonna keep that right there. And every once in a while, we're gonna jig it a bit. If something's waddling over it, you know, kind of, you know, bothering it, but not totally committing, we might jig it up a little bit and move it up. But otherwise, this thing is just sitting still and waiting for a fish to come in to attack this guy. And if it doesn't take this guy, it has a nice tasty meal just sitting waiting for it. On the other end, I'm going to take my jigging rod and reel and lure, and I'm gonna drop that back down there too to meet it by the bottom. Now you can see this also drop on the flasher. And with this one similarly, you know what, it's gonna be harder to jig without electronics, but you can definitely do it. You just gotta, you know, have a good memory of where you're at according to the bottom. You're gonna get it all the way down there. Then you're gonna crank, you know, maybe five, six times to get it a foot and a half, two feet off the bottom and then jig it around there. All right, and so you're not pulling them off the bottom. They're gonna be, you know, somewhere between zero and four feet off the bottom. You don't really know yet. Correct, so what, what happens is we end up with a, a lot of smaller fish that'll hug the bottom. Those little fish, if, once they come up off the bottom, if they get much more than a foot off of the bottom, they become vulnerable. The jumbo yellow perch that are in Lake Cascade are very large. They can reach all the way up to 17 inches in size and nearly three pounds. And so uh, those smaller perch that are in that two to three inch uh, range, they're gonna become food. Uh -oh. And so what you wanna do is uh, jig um, above the little perch because uh, uh, the, they're not gonna come up as high in the water column as the bigger perch will. And so a lot of times what happens is you attract a lot of small fish and then the bigger fish, they come in to investigate why are all the little fish gathering because they know that there's something there that they're interested in and you'll see them come through and the little fish will scatter off your screen, they'll disappear, and then all of a sudden you'll see a big red mark come shooting up off the bottom, and it'll just inhale your lure. And that's a pattern you guys are gonna see across the ice belt. That's just, that's not just perch here in Cascade, you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, what have you. The bigger perch are gonna be two to three feet up, right? And to really get them to commit, you wanna keep lifting them up and separate them from those smaller oh, I just schools. missed one. <laughs> I have one, I have a big one. Now, I'm gonna get over there and fish because we got fish on the flasher and we wanna land some for you guys. You know, we've been seeing some of the larger perch, it's like actually a smaller one, but we've seen a lot of the larger perch hitting hard on bigger profile lures. So now we're switching over to using uh, the rattling crank and our curve spoon uh, to kind of weed through some of these smaller guys and start getting these rapid action perch that are just shooting off the bottom. A lot of fun. Let me get this guy back in. Go. Yeah, nice fish. I'm jigging a small jig head with a dropper uh, chain on it. Oh, this is a beautiful fish. All right, come on up. Yeah. 
There you go. Check out that jumbo yellow perch here on Lake Cascade. We're with Taylor Tackle and we're having a lot of fun. Beauty. So we're going to be focusing on this top half today when we're targeting perch and there's kind of the more aggressive approach and the more finesse approach. Now everything here can be fished aggressively but that's the categories we're going to talk about just to break things down a little easier. So you know you got your spoons um, and your jigging lures as well as all of your jigs that match with soft plastics. So when we're fishing for perch there's usually three different kinds of bites that you'll you'll find. One is that they're, they can be very skittish and very light biting fish um, and that's where the dead stick presentation comes into play. I'm using an orange uh, lead jig head here and what I've done is I've tipped this jig head with uh, maggots. I'm using white and pink maggots and uh, I gob them on there um, just so I can uh, have a nice little meal presentation for those fish. And again it's going to be a very subtle approach. It's going to be very light jigging, not very often. It's going to be mostly just sitting still. And you have to have a rod holder when you're using this presentation or set your rod on a bucket. Something that's going to keep that rod as still as possible. So that's uh, going to be my dead stick presentation. All right, I'm going to be using this uh, micro diamond jig head with a big wad of waxies on there. I threaded them right next to the head there and squeezed them together so we can get a little bit of the juices out. It's a great scent um, and it's also tipped with a soft plastic and this helps me in terms of you know calling fish in with a little bit different color scheme uh, adding a little bit more profile to the jig and then also you know when these wax worms get you know picked off or things like that I still got a chance. On my active jigging rod what I've done is I've taken a uh, spoon that comes in the kit and uh, it has a dropper chain on it um, and it comes with a gold hook. What I've done is I replaced the gold hook and I've attached the, the uh, tiger perch colored jig head. And m for my bait presentation, I'm actually using an eyeball from a perch. And so uh, it's, another, uh, it's another presentation uh, that you can actively jig, but you can also softly jig this. When you softly jig it, you'll get action out of the chain movement on the jig head itself, or you can jig the entire uh, uh, spoon up and down in the water column. With a very little movement you'll get a kicking action on this lead jig head and uh, uh, you can lure the fish right in. So for my aggressive tactic I'm gonna be jigging this rattling crank and typically I dip this with uh, a minnow head or even a wad of maggots but luckily on this lake the fish are so aggressive that I can work this lure flawlessly without it so we're gonna go clean on this one jigging it in anywhere between two to four feet um, you know above the bottom. Yeah. Bring down and grab them. I know I've never had a situation where the perch are so big that I gotta clear them out of the hole with my hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is just that little, we're just doing that little diamond jig. Get a little bit closer here. We're using, uh, we're tipping it with that uh, larva right there. Um, we've got a larva matching a larva. Our plastic larva is gonna be red. That's going to keep, uh, you know, the fish sticking around if we lose the maggots on there. It's kind of a backup and it actually adds a little bit more of a profile to the bait, right? And then we got the maggots drifting around and that's going to seal the deal on these perch. Fish. Yeah. Are you marking a big school of bait up there or is I that just... I got a ton of little fish down low. Okay. I shouldn't say a ton. I got a few. I was just seeing if that was just my interference issues happening. All right, so finding perch is, uh, you know, the first part of the battle and probably the biggest one. And so the key to targeting perch on any body of water is finding structural transitions. Now these are changes in depth, changes in bottom, um, and, and these are gonna be, you know, structures like humps, saddles, points, holes, all sorts of stuff. Um, but what you're really looking for is a transition in depth as well. And, and, and you're gonna wanna be targeting depth somewhere between the 20 to 40 foot range and that's going to be for really any body of water it's going to change but those are the generalities and so you know we're out here on cascade 
the structure is a little bit different and I'm gonna let Bobby get into that a little bit. So Cascade is a reservoir and uh, a number of streams and rivers feed this reservoir. There's old river channels and creek channels that uh, are underneath the, the surface of the ice here. And what we're targeting is those areas where those old river channels used to be. The old shorelines, the old river banks and uh, creek banks. And so we're looking for those ledges, the drop-offs, the points, the depressions, the humps. We don't have a whole lot of wood structure on this reservoir. It's primarily a hard bottom reservoir. And so it's those things that we're looking for. The perch are chasing their minnows up into those areas and that's where they're capturing and actively feeding. They also will transition and follow that structure as they move throughout the reservoir. Yeah, and, and those bait fish could be anywhere along the structure. They're gonna get corralled, but we don't necessarily know where we're going to be in terms of being on the structure and where along the structure. So when we get out here, we're drilling holes 10 yards a piece, covering different depths. Um, and then we're gonna be testing out those holes. We're gonna see if we mark any fish. Uh, we're gonna fish a few and we're gonna keep moving on until we get in the same area that those bait fish are and those perch are piling up to have you know, a successful day. We're not just sitting in one place the whole time uh, if there's no fish there. Water temperature plays an important role and it is a reservoir and they're releasing water and adding water all the time. And so where you fished maybe three weeks ago, it may be a, a deeper water now. So three weeks can make a big difference. You could see a three foot uh, water level change and the fish that where they were three weeks ago, they could be somewhere else. And so you have to be able to willing and willing to move and try new locations. Um, and that's part of the fun of fishing Lake Cascade. Yeah. It's a new experience every time. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's crazy. They, the fish here get just gigantic. And so I don't want you to get disheartened at home because we're pulling out some big 14 and 15 inchers. These tactics can be used everywhere. And the changes that happen here in terms of water levels, they might not happen on your body of water, but changes in temperature, uh, the way that the schools are moving, all sorts of stuff are going to keep perch moving. And so while you're still targeting the same structural transitions and typically the same depths, you're going to want to keep moving spots. The perch that you caught two weeks ago, they might not still be there. And so staying active, looking at your maps, planning out new spots, drilling holes and testing is a really important part of this process. All right, we went over a lot of verbiage right there and I wanted to show you a blown up picture of the key structural features that we're discussing in the in today's show because you know, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around it if, it if we're just throwing out all this vocab. So on the left here, you've got an example map and that's just a better way for me to show you all of these keywords that we're talking about uh, in a visual um, model here. Uh, you know, I wish this was a lake that we could be fishing on right now. It looks pretty perfect, right? Uh, but I want you to focus on the ones in green because these are mid-lake structures. Uh, that are going to be within the 20 to 40 foot depth range and that's where perch are going to be holding. This structure um, transitions and those transition points are typically where those bait fish are corralling and the perch are holding up to ambush. Here in red is the creek channel and that's a very interesting structural feature in my opinion because it, it has a transition and bottom within itself, right? If you imagine a river or a creek that has boulders and then sand, rock, gravel, silt, that's happening here in this river channel here, right? Uh, creek channel, river channel, I'm gonna use them interchangeably. Creeks are just a little smaller. So I like those because you can target them in that deeper water that they're located in, you know, 30 to 40 feet um, and still have those transitions and bottom in a very tight location. And so that's what we focused on here in Cascade, where we have this creek bed coming in to a larger river bed and creek channels flowing off to the sides. And we positioned ourselves right into that kind of 35 to 40 foot range, right on a bend in the creek channel because that bend is where bait fish are gonna get corralled and kind of run up against uh, the original structure. So we like bends, we like fishing them, and we like being located uh, near other you know, points of access. You can see that this channel goes out deeper and deeper and deeper. We like it over here because then we can try and drill holes you know, shallower along this ledge here um, and try different things just in case the channel's not where they're at. 
So always be thinking about where you're positioning yourself in the broader scheme of the lake so you can get set up for success if you have to move. Now, we didn't have to move much because we caught fish all day here. However, creek channels are really something I want you to pull out of this as a target go-to if your lake has them. Nice fish here. It's a little foggy here today on Lake Cascade, but the fish are biting good. And look at this jumbo yellow perch. Come here. You know you catch a nice fish when you can lift a perch like that. Check out the colors on that fish. Is that beautiful or what? Here in Lake Cascade, it's a beautiful day. We're having fun catching these great fish. We're going to get this one off the hook and back in the hole. Beautiful fish. Thank you. Hardly even felt the bite. You want to swim right now? Oh, that's what I got. I oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, perch spoon. Oh, my. Spoon. That's a nice fish. And he's in my other line. Go oh, figure. Look at that. Nice. I have a mess. Again. Now, typically, you're gonna get a perch that comes in, you're gonna pull them off the bottom, and they need to be teased upwards. You wanna get them maybe two to three feet off the bottom, following your lure to convince them to commit. Once they get about a foot off the bottom, they get a little anxious. There's separation there, and they're much more likely to commit higher up in the water column when they've already made that movement there. So kind of tricking them into a situation in which they're forced to make a decision, and then capitalizing on that maybe four or five feet above the bottom. Now you are gonna lose some fish, they're, gonna, they're not going to go for it, and they're going to come back down to the bottom. And in that case, you know, try to bring it back down, work it back up. Sometimes those fish just aren't going to commit at any point, um, and you got to keep calling new fish in. Now, the reason why we dead stick and jig at the same time is not just to offer two different techniques, but to, you know, have some synergy between the two. They work together. And so this more aggressive jigging style is working up into the water column. It's flashy. It's got a jig and it's calling fish in. Um, and sometimes they're going to hit this aggressive presentation. Um, other times they're going to, you know, come in because they're interested, but really they want a meal on a platter that is offered by the dead stick. So, you know, some days you're going to have days where it's just all dead stick action. Um, and sometimes you can even get two of them in there. Otherwise, you just got to keep calling fish back in. So I have my dead stick set up, which is a very subtle presentation. It's for those soft biting fish. It may be a little spooked right now. Um, it's set about a foot off the bottom. And then I have my jigging rod where I'm about two to four foot actively jigging. And that's for the other two kinds of bites that we're trying to, uh, to go after. One is for those actively feeding fish. They're cruising the water column. What they do is they chase the minnows up off the bottom. As those minnows rise, They'll, they'll catch them. And so uh, those bigger fish will chase those minnows on this particular lake, uh, sometimes two to six foot up into the water column. That doesn't happen everywhere, um, but the, the perch that are here on Lake Cascade are, not, are unlike perch in most places. Some of these fish are very large fish. Um, in other places, you may be jigging less, but still having an active jigging rod above your dead stick, but you might only be jigging one to maybe three foot above that dead stick. So you need to be uh, always uh, conscious of where you're fishing and how the bite is. The other uh, uh, bite that you get when you're actively jigging is the fish that are, that are basically a reactionary bite. They may not be actually feeding, but they see this in their area and uh, they, they chase after it and they'll just bite it. Um, and so those are basically the, the three kinds of bites that you'll find when you're perch fishing. When you, when you jig, there's a few different methods that you can do. We have the dead stick, which is a total uh, uh, still presentation. Occasionally, I'll reach down and I'll jig this rod very gently. And then I'll put it right back in the rod holder 
and just leave it alone. Sometimes I'll take the rod tip and I'll just push it down once or twice and just leave it alone. <clears throat> when I'm actively jigging with my jigging rod, you can also hold your jig as still as possible by just doing this right here. This is one of the hardest presentations to do because you can never hold that jig perfectly still. That's why you need a rod holder. Even with me, it looks like I'm holding it still. There's still quite a bit of movement on my jig down low. The other uh, jigging method is waving the flag, just up and down. And you could vary how much you want to wave that flag. You can do little waves, you can do big waves. Okay. And then the, another method is you can jig it as you raise it. So you're jigging it, jigging it, jigging it, raising it as you're jigging it. And then work it back down. Same way. Okay, sometimes if I don't see fish on my flasher, what I'll do is I'll drop the lure all the way to the bottom and let it hit the bottom. Once I hit the bottom, I'll bounce it off the bottom two or three times. And what that does is it lets off vibration on the, on the bottom of the, the lake and it'll be a small little sediment poof that'll happen and that'll draw in fish. They'll come in to investigate what's going on over here. They'll feel that vibration on their lateral line and uh, uh, you know they're, they're trying to see what, what's going on over there. Is that something that I can eat? And the other thing that you can do is that when you're jigging, instead of dropping it on the bottom, sometimes I will raise my rod tip high into the water column and I'll jig it a couple times and I'll lower it back down. And what that does is those fish that are further out away from your fishing area, they see that bait rising up into the water column. They see it against the, the, the sunlight and the, the bottom surface of the ice, and it'll draw them in to come and investigate, what's that? Is that something that I can eat? And so uh, that's another method to uh, bring fish in visually. And uh, they see that, and they're looking for that, that meal opportunity that's being presented to them. Occasionally you get fish that come in like higher up in the water column and those uh, when you see a fish that comes in at four or five feet off the bottom they're coming in from the side those are usually actively feeding fish and uh, with them you want to be a little more aggressive on your jigging and make them chase that lure raise it raise it raise it pause and then they'll just slam that lure it's always a good sign when you see fish coming in uh, about four feet off the, the bottom and they're coming in from the side you know that those are big fish and they're chasing minnows. Right on this rattling crankbait here, not even tipping it with anything. These fish are so aggressive, he just came in and whacked it. Super fun. Come on, little buddy. Oh, that's a nice fish. There we go. That is the biggest perch that I have ever caught. Right there. Right there. Beautiful. And you know, I'm using this, I'm using about six pound braid on here and normally I'd have a leader on, but these fish just don't seem to care. And I want to keep this braid, you know, nice and fresh. And when it's coming through the hole, it saved me a couple times this trip. So, you know, if these big guys don't mind, I'll take whatever advantage I can get. We're going to get him back in. Here we go. All right. big one that was awesome Bobby thank you that was a beautiful fish all right that was an awesome day of fishing we want to recap some things for you guys because we know we went over a lot of information and so I like to really write things down get it all there and so if you need to pause the video and read through this go for it I'm gonna give some commentary on it but I think these are your key takeaways to be catching bigger perch next time you get out there and so let's start with the tactics Two pole approach, one of them's for jigging and one of them's for dead sticking. You're gonna wanna be fishing banking hours about, you know, nine to five. Uh, not like walleye or, you know, most of the other, you know, crappie, things like that. 
more panfish hours. Um, and you're gonna wanna be moving around. Once you get to the spot, you know, fish the spot, 50 yards, 10 to 20 holes per location, right? And, and, and dig in for a little while. These bigger fish are gonna be moving in schools though. And so if you position yourself right along the key structure, you should be getting fish coming in. Give it like 30, 60 minutes before you move the spot and just make sure that you're covering more water in the spot you're located in. So that's the general tactics. How are we gonna do those tactics? We're gonna do it with, you know, 28 inch medium light uh, fishing combos, rods and reels, right? Uh, and I like our multi-species one because it's great for perch, but you can do some other stuff with it too. There's a bunch out there, just make sure it's kind of in that medium to medium light range and that you're spooling it up with about four to six pounds of mono. You can do four pounds of braid too if you want to with you know a fluorocarbon leader. Uh, if you wanna tie that on directly or tie it to a snap, those are fine too. Uh, and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is locate that key structure um, that we're so focused on in ours it was the river channel and, and I think that's a really important uh, feature in any body of water that has it so definitely check your maps out if you can get on a river channel that one is pretty much guaranteed to sport both transitions where you've got the depth and you've got the bottom transition which is really important some other features don't have that uh, you know hopefully you know your humps and your and your saddles uh, and even your in inshore structure like points um, and, and the flats too will have that transition happen. Sometimes they don't, but river channels pretty much always do. And those river channels are gonna hold bait fish, right? And you want to position yourself along the river channel so that you're in a corralling area. When those big swoops come through, uh, that's where you wanna be. So you can find those by kind of zigzagging along the key structure, drilling a lot of holes, um, checking depths and moving around. Now, once you do get on fish, you gotta seal the deal with some solid technique. With your active jigging approach, you're gonna wanna do about two to four feet um, above the bottom. You can even get them up in six and seven feet. We've had some times out there where, you know, they're shooting up off the bottom and the higher you're up, you know, the, the greater distance you can call them in. They don't have a huge amount of sight. I'd say maybe like, you know, five to 10 feet. Um, and so you should be thinking about that if there's an aggressive bite on going even higher than you think normal. Now you can do that by multiple jigging techniques with waving the flag, uh, raising your jig up and up and up. That's great for sealing the deal once you get that separation on the perch. Snapping up and pounding the bottom, whatever you can do to call that fish in. Then when you're setting up your dead stick, uh, you know, one to two feet off the bottom, you want to get that on some sort of mechanism to keep it completely flat and not moving you want to keep it completely still because even if you're holding it in your hand it's gonna jiggle um, it's almost impossible to keep it totally still if it's not braced on something so whatever that is if it's from rod holders or maybe the side of your bucket or in my case the side of my flasher keep it on another object to keep it still um, and then you know every five to ten minutes then you give it a jig keep it a little lively see if anything's rooting around down there and if you get a fish in that's not taking the active jigging stick and it's not hitting the dead stick, but checking them out both a little bit, try kind of finesse jigging that dead stick. Sometimes that seals the deal for something that came in and needs something in between the two mediums, whether that's aggressive or finesse, it's gonna land somewhere in here and that aggressive might be too big of a profile. So those are the key takeaways for targeting big perch. I hope you have learned uh, plenty from this show. I know we have. We wanna thank uh, Bobby and Robin for all their help in filming this. Uh, and we're just really excited to get onto the next show for you guys.